Welcome to Limiting Reagent Made Easy, brought to you by Ketsbook. This is the final tutorial in my stoichiometry series, and in this video, we will learn how to identify reactants as limiting or in excess, and how to calculate reaction yields in a limiting reagent problem. The limiting reagent, also known as the limiting reactant of a reaction, is the reactant that limits the amount of product formed. Let's see how this works with s'mores. Suppose you went camping and took one box of graham crackers, which contains 27 crackers, one bag of marshmallows, which contains 40 marshmallows, and 12 bars of chocolate. How many s'mores could you make if you followed the original s'mores recipe? The original s'mores recipe, which first appeared in the 1927 Girl Scout Handbook and calls the dessert some more, states that you need two marshmallows toasted to a crisp, gooey state, one graham cracker split in half, and a half of a bar of chocolate to make one s'more. In order to get rid of the one half, let's just double the recipe, so four marshmallows, two graham crackers, and one chocolate bar are needed to make two s'mores. Now, in order to solve this problem, we need to calculate the number of s'mores that each reactant could make. Start with graham crackers. You have 27 graham crackers, and two graham crackers can make two s'mores, so you could make up to 27 s'mores from the amount of graham crackers you have. You have 40 marshmallows, and it takes four marshmallows to make two s'mores, so you could make up to 20 s'mores from the amount of marshmallows you have. You have 12 bars of chocolate, and one bar of chocolate can make two s'mores, so you can make up to 24 s'mores from the amount of chocolate you have. Now, sit back and look at the different amounts of s'mores that you can make from the different reactants. What do you think? How many s'mores could you actually make? That's right, you can only make 20 s'mores, because after that you won't have any more marshmallows. Marshmallows are the limiting reagent because they can make the least amount of s'mores. The limiting reagent is the reactant that can make the least amount of product. The other reactants are in excess. What about the theoretical yield? How much product can we make if everything works perfectly? That's right, 20 s'mores. The amount of product made by the limiting reagent is the theoretical yield. The theoretical yield is always the smallest amount of product that you calculate. All right, now let's try this with some chemicals. Suppose that we combined 75 grams of magnesium with 45 grams of nitrogen and heated them up. Predict the product of the reaction, determine the limiting reagent, and calculate the theoretical yield. Like always, start by writing down the balanced reaction. Magnesium and nitrogen are the reactants. Remember that nitrogen is diatomic. This is a combination reaction of a metal and a nonmetal, so there should be one product, which is an ionic compound. Magnesium will lose its two valence electrons to become Mg2+, and nitrogen will gain three valence electrons to get a total of eight valence electrons and become N3-. The formula of the product, magnesium nitride, is Mg3N2 because the numbers of the charges switch places and become subscripts. As it is written, the reaction is not balanced, but we can fix that by writing a 3 in front of Mg, making 3 magnesiums on both sides of the reaction. Next, we should write down the molar masses of all the reactants and products. Magnesium is 24.3 grams per mole, nitrogen is 28 grams per mole, and magnesium nitride is 100.9 grams per mole. In order to determine both the limiting reactant and the theoretical yield, we need to calculate the amount of product that each reactant could make. The smallest amount of product is the theoretical yield, and the reactant that makes the smallest amount of product is the limiting reagent. Let's start with magnesium. We have 75 grams of magnesium, and we want to figure out how much magnesium nitride we can make from it. So, we multiply it by three conversion factor fractions. As always, we write one mole on the top left and the bottom right. On the bottom left goes the mass of one mole of magnesium, that is 24.3 grams. Grams on the top and bottom cancel out. In the middle fraction, we put chemicals with their coefficients from the balanced reaction. Because we are starting with magnesium, write 3mg on the bottom. Because we are solving for magnesium nitride, write 1mg3n2 on the top. mg on the top and bottom cancel each other out. Lastly, write the molar mass of magnesium nitride on the top right, 100.9 grams. Moles on the top and bottom cancel out. 
calculate from left to right, multiplying by numbers on the top of fractions and dividing by numbers in the bottom of fractions. In your calculator, type 75 divided by 24.3 divided by 3 times 100.9, and the answer works out to be 104 grams of magnesium nitride. Next, we need to repeat this entire process for each reactant, so go ahead and write down 45 grams of nitrogen and multiply it by three conversion factor fractions. Once again, one mole goes in the top left and the bottom right. Because we are solving for exactly the same product, every numerator must be the same as our previous calculation. This is always true for limiting reagent questions. Go ahead and copy them from your previous setup. 1 mg3n2 in the middle and 100.9 grams on the right. The only two numbers that will be different are the bottom left and the bottom middle because they correspond to the reactant. On the bottom left goes the molar mass of nitrogen, that is 28 grams. And in the bottom middle we write 1n2 from the balanced reaction. To calculate this, we type 45 divided by 28 times 100.9, which is 162 grams of magnesium nitride. Now pause the video and try to answer the questions. What is the theoretical yield, and what is the limiting reagent? That's right! 104 grams of magnesium nitride is the smallest amount of product, so it must be the theoretical yield. It is impossible to make more than that because you will run out of magnesium. The reactant that makes the smallest amount of product is the limiting reagent, so magnesium is the limiting reagent in this case. After the reaction is done, there will be some of the other reactant left over, so we say that there is excess nitrogen for this reaction. Let's take this problem one step further. Suppose that we actually performed this reaction in the lab and collected 88.7 grams of magnesium nitride. Calculate the percent yield of the reaction. Remember that the percent yield is the actual yield divided by the theoretical yield, all multiplied by 100 to turn the fraction into a percent. Also remember that the actual yield is always found in the question itself. How much did we make? 88.7 grams, that is the actual yield. Let's plug in the numbers to calculate the percent yield. 88.7 grams divided by 104 grams times 100% works out to be 85%, which is a very reasonable yield. Last of all, remember that the limiting reagent is the reactant that produces the least amount of product, and that least amount of product is the theoretical yield. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up. Be sure to also share any comments or questions you have below, share this video with a friend, subscribe to my channel, or check me out at ketsbook.com.